For each of George's books, there are two choices to make. Each book is either hardcover or not hardcover, and it's either fiction or not fiction. So that's a two set or two trait overlapping sets question, which means the chart is going to work uh, well, work nicely. Now the crucial step in using the chart is labeling the chart. So I want this column to be all about the hardcover books. And a lot of points are lost or a lot of people get frustrated or don't understand the chart because of this next step. If I call this column hardcovers, then what am I going to call this column? Well, a crucial thing to notice about charts in general is that columns don't overlap with each other and, and rows don't overlap with each other. So I need to label this something that cannot overlap with hardcovers. And it's really tempting to say, well, two choices, hardcover, fiction. But let's think about that. What does that mean? If I call this hardcover and this fiction, then what, where am I going to put the hardcover fiction books? The problem is these two things can overlap and the nature of the chart says that they don't overlap. So I can't call this row fiction. So what cannot overlap with hardcover? Well, what's the, what's the, what's the thing that's not hardcover? It's just, it's just not hardcover, right? I guess in this question, it's the paperbacks. So, and those two things can't overlap, right? There's no way to be hardcover and not hardcover. Uh, so now we've got, I guess, labeling that, that matches the logic of a grid. And if I call this row fiction, this row will all be about fiction, and this will all be about not fiction. And I always do it like this, by the way, just so that, so that out of habit, I don't make uh, the mistake of, of, of having two things that can overlap. I always have one letter here and then the same letter next to it uh, crossed off. All right, and then to continue, these outside rows and columns are our totals. And before we add info, let's just quickly review some of the logic of the chart. If this is the total of all the fiction books, then what's the relationship between this number and these two numbers? Well, the fiction books are going to come from two, there's, there's two kinds of fiction books we can say, right? The fiction books, some of them are hardcover, and the rest of them are not hardcover. So then these two numbers are everything. In other words, these two numbers need to add up to the total number of fiction books. Similarly, these two numbers, if we're talking about the hardcovers, then there's this kind of hardcover, and then there's every other kind of hardcover, and they need to add up to our total down here, and these two numbers add up to this, and these two numbers add up to this, and then what's left down here? Well, if this is all the fiction, and this is all the nonfiction, then that's everything, right? There's the fiction, and then there's all the other ones. So these two numbers are similarly going to add up to this one. So this bottom box is always going to be the overall total of everything. And it'll come from the sum of these and the sum of these, right? Because uh, uh, if we look at this box is the total hardcovers. This is the total of everything else. So then they're going to add up to the overall total of everything. All right, what else can we add from the stem? George has a total of B books. So total of B books, we just said the overall total goes down here. So there's our B, 25 of which are hardcover fiction. Hardcover fiction. So that's hardcover and it's fiction. Our 25 goes in this box. And we need enough information to, to fill out this chart until we get one and only one value down here. So let's look at the statements. Statement number one tells us that 40 of the books are fiction and the rest are nonfiction. So where does the 40 go? Well, we're told that 40 of the books are fiction. So that's our total number of fiction. Our 40 goes here. And can we make any deductions? Well, this is a nice uh, column, be, uh, nice row, because we've got two of three. So that means we can figure out the third. And we know these two add up to this. So that means we've got 15 over here. And is this enough to get down here? Well, I guess I don't know any of the remaining boxes, right? In each case, all of these, these columns, I only have one value. 
So I'm not going to know any of the, it'd be great if I knew this one, right? If I knew this one, then I could definitely get my total, but this number could be anything. This guy could be uh, uh, 60, in which case we have 100 over here. Or this guy could be a million, in which case we have a million and 40 over here. So we don't know this value, therefore we don't know this value. So number one is insufficient. So what about statement two, which we'll consider on its own? Uh, we no longer know that info from statement number one, so looking at number two on its own. Statement number two tells us that 60 of the books are hardcovers. So our total number of hardcovers is 60. Which means, well, since we know of the hardcovers, 25 of them are fiction, the other 35 of the hardcovers are nonfiction, and can we get over here? Well, no, we're in the same place as last time, right? We have no idea what uh, what this value is, so this value could be anything, so number two is insufficient. So what if we look at the statements together? Let's bring, let's bring statement number one back. If we're considering the statements together, let me get a new color for together, we're considering the statements for together. Well, now we have all this information, so a bunch of this chart is filled out. And let's see if we can now uh, get the rest of it filled out to get down here. Well, one thing we might notice is, is for every row and column that's remaining, we only have one value. There's no, there's no row or column in which we have two of three values, which is really where we want to be, because then we can always get the third. So we want to be really suspicious of this right off the bat, and there's almost, you know, definitely many ways to fill in this chart and get different values down here. So if we're back in time, we might just right away say insufficient, but you know, if you're getting used to the chart and want to confirm that that's the case, let's see. Let's just make sure that more than one set of values could work here. Let's just pretend that this is uh, 40. If this were 40, then what would this be? This would be 100. And then these two guys need to add up to 100, so this would be 60. And then that would leave us with 25 over here. And sure enough, all the columns and all the rows work out. But we just picked that 40 randomly, right? So let's just make sure that we get something else with a, uh, uh, a different number. If we pick... Uh, I don't know, 100 for here. Then that leaves us with 160 total and 120 over here and 85 over here. And again, all the rows and columns work out. So we can see that, that there's going to be uh, well, infinite possibilities for our B value. So even together, even when we have all the information, the statements are insufficient, which means that E is the answer. We'll never know how many books George has.